hello everybody uh, so this is third in the final part of the discussion of the surgical group of neat ss 2022 uh, apologies for not being able to take the live session so starting with the first so if such biopsy uh, like endoscopy image is given with ulcero proliferative growth in the stomach the next step is always we do a biopsy and then we do a ct scan abdomen to see the local staging and also consider about the regional spread so the answer would be endoscopic biopsy with a ct scan of abdomen now lumbar triangle superior and inferior are important inferior triangle petite which is if his had been asked question like which is not a component or which are the components so the answer would be that it is bounded by iliac crest the <coughs> external oblique muscle the latissimus dorsi muscle so latissimus dorsi iliac crest and the external oblique muscle so this will form the parts of the inferior lumbar triangle of petit principle behind permissive hypertension so initial aim is to maintain the blood supply of the vital organs so not to reduce the blood transfusions or anything it is basically to maintain the blood supply to the vital organs what is the false statement regarding severity of acute pancreatitis? So this from the Savistan 21st edition is very important. So mild usually has no organ dysfunction, moderate has organ failure in less than 48 hours. While severe if it is more than 48 hours, if CRP is increased, it is usually greater than 150 which is termed as a severe pancreatitis so if moderate acute pancreatitis transient organ failure lasting less than 24 hours is a wrong statement it should be lasting less than 48 hours <coughs> i had uh, told you to remember this table very very important which is not a risk factor for post ercp pancreatitis so uh, indomethacin suppository or any such thing if given as an option is not a risk factor definite and possible are different prior ercp related pancreatitis is a definite risk factor for post ercp pancreatitis so if this is the option it is the correct answer female sex low volume and absent cbd stone are possible risk factors but i think if such a uh, option is given that is the correct answer which is not a risk factor for post ercp pancreatitis now coming to restrictive lung disease pyrometry values so it should be normal or low <coughs> post expiratory functional reserve post expiratory volume in first second post vital capacities decreased and fev1 to fevc ratio is less greater than 80 so i think if this are the option then that becomes the correct answer in this very straightforward taken from this table of bailey so I think they have covered majority of the CTBS questions from Bailey and they have taken some questions from the Sabiston. Now coming to a patient having mild occlusion tooth with not able to close mouth properly if such OPG is given. As you can see translucency near the condyles on bilateral side it is pointing towards a bilateral TMJ joint dislocation. So if mild occlusion of teeth is given that means that is there is some pathology involving the TM joint. So if such OPG is given, the answer would be a bilateral TMJ dislocation. Now if a patient comes with you uh, with a trauma, bilateral lower limb spasticity with a right upper limb radicular pain with inversion of a supinator reflex. So that should highlight that supinator reflex is related to the brachioradialis muscle which reflex is lost. If you can see biceps and brachioradialis reflexes are lost in C5, C6 injury. So in this best answer would be C5 level injury. If root is asked then it would be C6 but if level is asked it is usually C5. There is no direct uh, reference which I could find for the uh, particular clinical scenario given but I feel best answer would be C5 for this. What is wrong regarding shock? So basically we all know that there is a shift from anaerobic aerobic to anaerobic metabolism and the end product is not CO2 but lactic acid because of which lactic acidosis and metabolic acidosis develops. So end product is not CO2 it is lactic acid for such question. 
so if such figure is given wherein they have put an incision over the wrist joint with a margin of a white ligamentous structure have been divided with a glistening white vertical structure going which is usually the median now this figure points towards carpal tunnel release surgery iodine 123 what is a wrong statement it is not used for treatment of dtc so this has been taken from the shorts so i think the questions are taken from bailey's abiston majority of them and thyroid breast have been covered from shorts so usually iodine 123 as a half-life 12 to 14 it is used for imaging of lingual thyroid or goiters and <clears throat> as iodine 131 as a higher dose radiation it is used to treat differentiated thyroid cancer but 123 is not used malignant hypothermia very straightforward dentoline is used we all know we have we have all been studying this that for malignant hyperthermia the treatment of choice is dantoline sodium so this is the right answer for this if a patient with pneumobilia distension gallstone so it is because there is a stone which has passed it is a picture of a small bowel obstruction if gallstone ileus is given then it should be the answer otherwise not miresis it is basically gallstone ileus that the stone has passed and led it to obstruction in the small bowel leading to small bowel distension so i think for this best answer should be small bowel obstruction Coming to the metabolic abnormality in jejunal urinary diversion, so it has not been directly given in either of Bailey's abiston, but from articles I have found very important that for jejunum there will be hyperkalemic, hypochloremic metabolic acidosis. So don't worry if you have not been able to answer this because it has not directly been mentioned anywhere or I could not find it. But don't worry if you are not able to answer, we have left it unmarked this is slightly tough question so if you have been able to answer then well and good but don't worry if you've not been able to so the answer would be hyperkalemic hypochloremic metabolic acidosis now false regarding rtpcr taken from bailey straightforward from a paragraph they've taken all the statements so for rtpcr <clears throat> basically we can take make single copy to million copies we can make from a single copy then pcr can be used for testing of clonality and we can detect amplifications but we can also detect microorganisms so cannot detect or microorganism is a false statement now if they have given some injury which involves this portion or like this so this usually comes in the zone 2 if it is only the distal phalanges then it is zone 1 if the uh, mid to proximal phalanges and the metacarpophalangeal joint then it is zone 2 near the carpals uh, that is zone 3 so here if there is injury as I have shown in this diagram it is zone 2 tendon injury in the hand if such figure is given which has been mentioned as disappearing by one year of age usually it is termed towards hemangioma or a capillary hemangioma because this are the commonest birthmark and they usually resolve by seven years old even if they've given one year that's fine i think the answer for this should be hemangioma for snowman appearance if they've given very specific like supracardiac infracardiac i could not find in our books but for our, from articles it has been given that snowman sign is usually seen in the total anomalous pulmonary venous return type one which is also the supracardiac type so the answer for this should be a supracardiac type of total anomalous pulmonary venous return. Now foreign fornius gangrene, I have not put any discussion for this because it was a very straightforward question. If you have read or if you have worked in your residency, you will you may have and you must have answered it correctly. So moving on to next. Now for this question, there is some uh, doubt regarding the options. So I could find the straightforward line that sclerosing adenosis is the most common pathological diagnosis in patients who are undergoing needle directed biopsy for microcalcification given in Sabiston. So if sclerosing adenosis was not the option, then the second best answer would be DCIS. But if sclerosing adenosis was the option, then it should be the answer because it is straightforward line from Sabiston. For ample 
survey for m if they have given menstrual history it is not a component it is basically allergic allergies medication history past medical or surgical history last time when the patient has something to eat or drink and events so this should be the answer for fontaine classification this has been given in sabiston correction sabiston 28th edition so if the question was regarding moderate to severe claudication it should be stage 2b and if it is for ischemic arrest pain then it should be stage 3 so if it is moderate to severe claudication stage 2b and for rest pain it should be stage 3 now this is a slightly doubtful thing if they have given a figure like this that is a sign of benedictic it is seen in median nerve injury so that should be answer if the image was like this, then it should be a low ulnar nerve injury, that is ulnar claw hand. Both are different, so I have not been able to get a proper recall from you guys for this. So if that image is like this, it should be ulnar nerve injury. If this, then it should be a median nerve injury. Very straightforward question, compression of duodenum between SMA or aorta or the will case is what? So it is basically compression of duodenum between SMA and aorta. So that's just the very straightforward easy question. Now question regarding the blood transfusion products, very, very, very important. So each of them PRBC stored in CPB for shelf life of two to three weeks at two to six degrees. FFP stored at minus 40 to minus 50 degrees and have a two year shelf life. Cryoprecitate stored at minus 30 degrees for two years and platelets are stored at 20 to 24 degrees they are not stored at negative deg 10 degree or on an agitator so it is basically they are stored at 20 to 24 degree so this is again very very important and much easier question now blast injury if most common organ asked then it should be tympanic membrane <coughs> followed by lung and if the mechanism is asked that is basically air field organ is involved more common because of the interaction at the air fluid interface so if <coughs> either of the two options are there then organ is asked specific then it should be tympanic membrane followed by lung and if the specific mechanism of injury is asked then it should be the interaction that is air fluid interface or the air field organs are more commonly involved in the injury due to over pressure now scalene triangle if you go from the medial to lateral first would be subclavian vein followed by the anterior scalene muscle followed by the axillary artery and brachial plexus. So if identification is asked always remember that towards the sternum and the medial part of the first strip the first structure should be subclavian vein followed by the anterior screening muscle followed by the subclavian artery and the brachial plexus i had mentioned that this box is very important in my must know videos so the answer is it evades autoptosis and not autophagy other are all logical to answer so if this option has been given then it is the wrong answer it is not a feature of the malignant transformation Testicular tumors, again, they have picked up from the summary boxes. So, testicular tumors, they spread to the parabiotic. US is mandatory in all cases. Whenever we have a testicular tumor, we go for ultrasound. So, that is the right answer. US is mandatory in all the cases. False about modified shock index. So, basically, it is not better. MSI is better than shock index. And that is why it is more commonly used in the shock index straight forward from Sabiston 21st edition. Now patient coming with a decreased breath sound on one side with percussion showing resonant note, very straightforward pointing towards tension pneumothorax, very straightforward, easier question to answer, no discussion required. Lipodermatosclerosis again a straightforward associated with chronic venous insufficiency, not much discussion required for this. I think and I hope nobody has made mistakes in the last few questions because we, they were very straightforward and easy questions. PSA is not produced. So this is somewhat difficult. I could not find anywhere in the book. So I've taken from the article. So PSA <coughs> is produced in tumors that is breast, kidney, thyroid, ovary, liver, 
but not produced from bone marrow other than prostate more commonly breast kidney ovary livers but not from bone marrow prostatic biopsy core if this image is given ideally remember that a 12 core biopsy is accurate and the preferred one so usually it will have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and 9 10 11 12 so this should be the answer if such figures are asked there is no core taken in the midline it is always 12 8 uh, <clears throat> 6 on each side so i think for this answer should be this that is 12 core biopsy is the ideal prosthetic biopsy if a patient post aortic aneurysm repair with d dimer high a pt aptt borderline altered with a severe thrombocytopenia if heparin induced thrombocytopenia is given then that should be the answer but if not then dic is the best answer because of d dimer is also high so for this answer should be dic tof now this is a very controversial thing because i have not been able to get the full recall so uh, a cyanotic disease with a tetralogy of phthalate surgery not done usually already there is a pulmonary stenosis so pulmonary artery banding should not be done but this is still a speculation if you have still clarity about the question in the options you can let me know later in the dms i'll be able to correct it and put it right in the pdf now if such images are of a us so you can see that there is hyper hypo again hyper hypo and hyper so this is invading the fifth layer if you can see here it is invading up to the fifth layer so it is invading the serosa so in this stage it is usually pointing towards stage t4 now this is a very classic neat ss type question which was earlier asked in the gi surgery part somewhat confusing but if we have read the five layers which are seen in the us and you can just try and see that where it is invading into so it is mostly going to the zeros are so it should be t4 so coming to the last question so patient with a trauma with low direct light reflex and normal consensual eye reflex now i have not been able to find a direct uh, reference for this but whatever i read on the in the articles i think the answer should be optic now but i'll still try to find accurate uh, reference for this and i'll let you know if you have any discrepancies from the questions I've discussed today, then you can uh, DM me. So this brings an end to the almost majority of the questions asked. So I hope everybody has scored well and the solutions and the discussion which I've done is helpful to you. If you have any remaining questions or any discrepancies, then you can please let me know. Thank you so much for watching.